Now it's time to get ready for the Chapter 2 test, which is all about differentiation. And so this video will give you a recap of a lot of the rules, some of them mixed together, and a lot of the different steps that you'll have to do on the Chapter 2 test. So the first slide that you're looking at right now is a quotient rule problem. Now on the test, it's not going to say, do the quotient rule. Your expectation is that you look at it and think, oh, well, it's being divided. I have to. And the other thing that this is reviewing is I'm asking you to find both the first and the second derivative, so looking at the higher order derivatives. So we're going to start with just the first derivative and using the quotient rule. So our quotient rule is the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. You want to clean up the top as much as you can, get the distributing done, combine the like terms. So we get 2x minus 10 makes you distribute the minus sign, minus 2x minus 1. You're not going to touch the bottom. You want to leave it as a binomial squared. So when you're done, your 2x's will cancel. You get a first derivative of negative 11 over x minus 5 quantity squared. So that is dy dx. That's your first derivative. Now it's asking you to do a second derivative. And here's where you have a couple options. You could go through and do another quotient rule, because it is a division problem. The only issue with that is you're doing a quotient rule, and it has a chain rule kind of built in, because you have that piece in the bottom that's being squared. So I want to show you another option. Instead of doing the quotient rule with in the second derivative, I'm going to take the, second, the first derivative, and I'm going to change the way that it's written. I'm going to rewrite it as negative 11 times x minus 5 to the negative 2 power. Same thing, I'm just rewriting it, kind of like you did when you started chapter 2 and you were first learning how to take derivatives and you rewrote things with negative exponents. The reason that this is so beneficial is now it turns into a chain rule, which is going to take half the time than it would have done doing another quotient rule. So to take the second derivative, I'm going to bring the power out front. So I have a negative times a negative is going to give me a positive 22. I'm going to take the power one less. So 1 less is negative 3. And then I'm going to take the derivative of what's inside, which in this case, we're lucky, the derivative of what's inside is just 1. So I have 22. I'm going to put that negative exponent back to the bottom, giving me an x minus 5 to the positive third power. And that's my second derivative. So this is a great problem because it gave you a quotient rule recap, but then it also showed you how to do a second derivative and re, uh, review the chain rule all in one problem. What you're looking at here is a trig review. When we talked about trig, we talked about our basic trig derivatives. And once we got to the chain rule, we talked about different levels of our trig derivatives, if it has a different angle, if it has a different power. What I'm doing here with you as a good review problem is both issues. We have a different power and a different angle. So this was the one that had four factors to the answer. You have power out front, so that's where the 5 comes from, the original trig to the power 1 less, Remember that the trig function itself doesn't change. It's still secant and still has an angle of 2x. The derivative of the trig function, the derivative of secant is secant tangent. And again, the angle can't change. So if it was 2x from the beginning, it has to stay 2x the whole problem. And then finally, the derivative of the angle, the derivative of 2x is 2. You don't want to leave your answer like this. It's not simplified at all. You want to multiply together your coefficients to give you 10. The other thing you want to do is you actually have other like factors. You have a secant of 2x to the fourth times a single secant to the 2x. So when I multiply those together, I add exponents, I get secant to the fifth of 2x, and then I have the tangent that had nothing to combine with. So there's an example of trig. It's a good review of trig derivatives, but it's also telling you how do you deal with trig when you're dealing with higher powers and different angles. The last problem in this review vid video is implicit, and what you'll notice by the title that you see at the top, it's implicit, and it also incorporates the product rule, so one of the few rules that we haven't talked about in this last five minutes. Take the derivative term by term. Keep in mind that every time you take the derivative of a y term, you must include dy dx. So for the first one, power out front, power one less, and then the derivative of y is dy dx. Here's where you have to be careful with your minus sign. You want to think of one of your terms being negative, or you want to think that you have to distribute that negative. So when you do the product rule, first times the derivative of the second, and then normally you say plus second times the derivative of the first, it's going to end up being minus y times the derivative of x is just 1. You can write it, or you don't have to. That minus sign is the most commonly missed piece, and it's usually incorporated on the AP test to check and see if you remember. Derivative of 7x is 7, and the derivative of 8 is 0. 
Now we want to rearrange. We want to keep all the dy dx's together, and we want to keep all the, the terms that do not have dy dx, have them move to the other side. So I'm going to move these two to the other side. When I do that, I'm going to get a positive y on the other side, because I have to add this, and I'm going to get a negative 7 on the other side. Over here, I have a 4y dy dx and a negative x dy dx. I want to factor out a dy dx, and you can do that all at once to save some time. So we have a 4y minus x equals y minus 7. And then the last step to get divided by dy dx by itself is to divide by the factor that is next to it. Here is your derivative. Keep in mind it will be made up of x's and y's because your original function was written implicitly. Your derivative will also be written implicitly. And that's how you do implicit differentiation with the product rule.